hello friends welcome to lecture series on matrix analysis with applications so in this lecture we will talk about subspaces in the last lecture we have seen that what vector spaces are and how can we see that a given uh, given set is a vector space or not over uh, over a given real field okay real or complex field so uh, what subspaces are let us see let v be a vector space over the field f and let w be a subset of v okay this v is a vector space over the field f and this w is a subset of this v then this v this w is called subspace of v if w itself is a vector space over the field f with respect to the same operations of vector addition and scalar multiplication on v whatever scalar whatever vector addition and scalar multiplication is in v over f the same vector the so same vector addition and scalar multiplication we apply on w which is a subset of v if it itself a vector space of the same field f then we say that is a subspace of v. So, in any vector space v two subspaces are trivial the first one is v itself okay, because v is a subset of v and it is a vector space and this uh, 0 subspace which is a trivial subspace of trivial subspaces of vector spaces v. The subspace this 0 this 0 is simply additive identity you see and is also called 0 subspace of v. Okay. So, if if a set is given to you okay, if a subset of a vector space v is given to you and if this w itself is a vector space over the same field f with respect to the same set of vector additions and scalar multiplication then we say that w is a uh, subspace of the vector space v. Now, how can we show that a given uh, subset w of v is a subspace. So, instead of showing all the properties of a vector space v if we show these two properties that is closure with respect to addition vector addition and closure with respect to scalar multiplication then it is sufficient to show that uh, that w is a subspace of this vector space v. Now, uh, how can we say this you see you see that uh, we say that uh, v is a sub vector space over the field f if if v with respect to plus is an abelian group okay abelian group means uh, first is closure next is associative okay then uh, identity identity element then inverse element okay, and then commutative. If these property holds with, with respect to addition vector addition then we say that v with respect to addition is a abelian group and with respect to dot the first is closure the second property is 1 dot v is equal to v for all v in uh, v. Okay. Third property is alpha plus beta dot with v is equals to alpha dot v plus beta dot v, where alpha beta are in uh, field and v is any vector in v. Next is uh, alpha beta dot v is equals to alpha alpha dot beta dot v okay, and same as uh, beta beta dot uh, alpha dot v. Okay and next is alpha dot v 1 plus v 2 is must be equals to alpha dot v 1 plus alpha dot v 2 for all alpha in field and for all v 1 v 2 in vector space v. So, if these property hold respect to addition and scalar multiplication then we say that v is a vector space over the field f. Now, now we are taking w as a subset of v over the same field f with respect to same uh, vector addition and scalar multiplication. Okay. Now, now uh, you see uh, you see if you say uh, these prop closure closure is automatically because of this property the first property is itself uh, says that it is close with respect to vector addition. Okay. Now, the second property is associative since associative holds for every element u v w in v. 
so it will hold for a subset of v also okay now we have to show the existence of identity element and inverse with respect to addition okay now we know that uh, u plus v belongs to w for all uh, uv belongs to w and alpha dot u belongs to w for all alpha belongs to field and u belongs to w okay now if you take alpha equal to 0 say for example because it hold for every alpha so it will hold for alpha equal to 0 also and 0 dot u is nothing but ident identity respect to addition so that means 0 belongs to w so we have shown that uh, existence of identity element with respect to addition now for inverse for inverse you simply uh, you simply replace you simply replace alpha by minus 1 so minus 1 dot u is minus u we have already shown so that means inverse element with respect to addition also exist now commutativity property holds because because this property holds for every u v in v so it will hold for a subset also because subset uh, elements of uh, w are nothing but the elements of v and this v holds commutative property for every u v in v so it will hold for a subset also so so we can say that w with respect to plus is an abelian group okay now we have to show with respect to dot now with respect to dot closure is automatically satisfied because of the second property okay now one dot v is v because uh, it it is now this property is holding for every alpha okay you you see you see this property is holding for every v in v so it will hold for a subset also okay so we can say that this property hold and similarly all the remaining three properties also hold for w because w is a subset of v so hence we can say that uh, if we show that these two properties then we can say that w is a subspace of v or or we can club these two properties as we can club this property to two properties alpha dot u plus v should belong to w for all uh, uv in w and alpha in f okay so uh, either we have two ways to show that w is a subspace of vector space v either we show these two properties separately or we can show the single property and we can show that then we can say that w is a subspace of a vector space v okay so now let us discuss few examples based on this the first example is v we are taking as r2 over the real field r okay now w which is given as all x y in r2 such as x plus 2 y is equal to 0 and we have to show that w is a subspace of this vector space v okay now what is what is v here v is entire r2 and field is r okay so this is something like this this entire r2 is simply a uh, vector space v over the real field uh, over the real field okay now w is simply all x y in r2 such that x plus 2y is equal to 0. So, it is passing through origin when x is 0, y is 0 and when x is minus 1, when x is minus 2 for example, then y then uh, then y is 1, then y is 1. So, it is something this line, okay. this is x plus 2y is equal to 0. So, it is of course, a, it is of course, a subs, uh, subset of this R2. Now we have to see that whether it is a now we have to show that it is a subspace of this v. So you take two arbitrary element in w and alpha in field. So u is something you can say is u is as x1 y1 and say v is x2 y2. Okay. So this implies x1 plus 2 y1 is equal to 0 and uh, x2 plus 2 y2 is equal to 0 because u v are from w. So, it will satisfy these properties. Now, if it is a subspace, then we have to show that alpha u plus v must be in w. So, take alpha dot u plus v. So, it is alpha dot u is x1 y1 plus x2 y2. So, it is alpha x1 alpha y1. 
So, here I am taking the usual scalar multiplication okay, because I am taking R 2. So, uh, I have uh, we have taken the standard uh, addition vector addition scalar multiplication okay, it is x 2 y 2 and when you add them. So, it is simply alpha x 1 plus x 2 alpha y 1 plus y 2 again by the standard uh, vector addition. Okay. Now, we have to show that this is in this is in w. So, that means we have to show that x this is x and this is y. So, we have to show that x plus 2 y must be 0 then only we can say that this element is in w. So, you can take x plus 2 y. Now, x plus 2 y is alpha x 1 plus x 2 plus 2 times alpha y 1 plus y 2 it is equal to alpha times x 1 plus 2 y 1 plus x 2 plus 2 y 2 and it is 0 x 1 plus 2 y 1 is 0 from this equation and x 2 plus 2 y 2 is 0 from this equation. So, it is alpha into 0 plus 0 which is 0 and this implies x comma y belongs to w. So, we can say that this this x and this y is in w that means w is a subspace of v. Okay. Now, now similarly if you want to show that this matrix this uh, vector space we have taken as all m cross and matrices over the real field R and w with a subset of this uh, v we have taken as all sim collection of all symmetric matrices where a equal to a transpose. And again if you want to show that the subspace of v so again it is very easy to show you simply you simply take uh, two matrices A comma B belongs to W. So, this implies A is equal to A transpose and B is equal to B transpose and we have to show that a matrix C which is alpha dot A plus B is also in W. So, uh, that means we have to show that uh, C is equal to C transpose. So, take C transpose which is alpha dot A plus B whole transpose which is alpha dot a transpose plus b transpose and it is alpha dot a plus b because uh, because a transpose is a and b transpose is b. So, it is equal to c. So, this implies c is in w. So, we have shown that w is a subspace of this vector space v because all the matrices which is uh, equal to its transpose are in w and we have shown that c is equal to c transpose and c is nothing but alpha a plus b that means that means w is a subspace of this vector space v okay similarly similarly we can show for the third problem also you take two arbitrary element two arbitrary vectors of p2 and try to show that the uh, it is closed under addition and scalar multiplication or you can show that you can take u and v in p 2 and you can try to show that alpha dot u plus v is also in p 2. Okay. Now, similarly if you take the next example where we have taken v as a collection of all uh, functions uh, from r into r and we have considered a subset w of v such that uh, f of minus 1 is 0. Okay. All those functions v which are uh, which vanishes at minus 1 this we are taken as w. So, again in order to show that it is a subspace of this vector space v you take any two arbitrary element of this vector this subset w and try to show that it is closed with respect to addition and scalar multiplication. Okay. Now, then the last example last uh, example of this uh, slide that we are we are taking uh, v as all m cross uh, uh, n cross 1 matrices over the field f suppose a b n m cross n matrix over f is a fixed matrix. Then a set of all n cross 1 column matrices x over f such that a x equal to 0 is a subspace of v. Okay. You see that uh, here here we have taken w as all x all x in v such that a x is equal to 0. Okay. Here a is a fixed matrix of order m cross n and this x is uh, a vector uh, of order m cross n cross 1 okay. and the collection of all those x we are claiming that this w is nothing but a subspace of 
the vector space v okay now now it is easy to show you you, you see that uh, if uh, you again again you take uh, again you take two elements uh, say x1 and y1 in w okay now of course of course this set is never empty this set is never empty because this is never empty because uh, because at least x equal to 0 is in the set okay and if if it contains a singleton 0 so that is a trivial subspace of trivial subspace of v and if it is if it is not a trivial subspace so it will contain infinitely many x such that a x equal to 0 because because this is a linear system of homogeneous equations which is either a unique solution or infinitely many solutions if it is if it is as a unique solution which is x equal to 0 that is a trivial subspace of uh, v that is automatically satisfied but if and if it has an infinitely many solution then we can prove it like in this way we will assume that x1 and y1 are two elements in w that means a x1 a x1 equal to 0 and a y1 equal to 0 and we have to show that a z which is uh, alpha dot x1 plus y1 is also in is also in w so you take a into z a into z is a alpha dot x1 plus y1 which is alpha dot a x1 because alpha is a scalar and it is a y1 and it is 0 and it is 0 so it is 0 so that means z belongs to w and hence we can say that w is nothing but a subspace of this vector space v okay so basically uh, to show that this is a subspace we have to take two cases first is a unique solution of this if it is a unique solution that means trivial subspace if not unique that is infinitely many solutions and the pro and the proof follows on these lines okay so in this way we can see that whether a given subset of a vector space v constitute a subspace or not in this way we can show that it's a subspace of vector given vector space v okay now let us uh, consider a few more problems based on this now here in the first problem we have taken v as r2 over the real over the um, field r okay now we have considered w1 which is all x1 x2 such that x1 is greater than or equal to 0 okay so what what w here is so in the first example we have taken v as r2 and field as r okay this is this is the thing and x1 greater than or equal to 0 x this is x1 and this is x2 x1 greater than or equal to 0 means uh, this thing so whether whether this half of this r2 will constitute a subspace of this vector space or not okay so so you see that uh, if it is a subspace if it is a subspace of this vector space then it must be close with respect to addition and scalar multiplication okay now now if you take if you take element say say 1 comma 2 1 comma 2 is in w yes because because w are all those x1 x2 such that uh, x1 is greater than or equal to 0 here x1 is greater than or equal to 0 so it is in w and you take and alpha is uh, alpha is any uh, any real number it is come from the field so if you take alpha as one, minus 1 say then minus 1 dot 1 comma 2 will be minus 1 comma minus 2 which is not in w so so that means it is not closed with respect to scalar multiplication and that means it will not constitute a subspace of this vector space v because if it is a subspace of the vector space v it must be closed with respect to vector addition and scalar multiplication okay so if we have to show that it is a subspace of vector space then you must show that it is closed with respect to addition and scalar multiplication and if it is not a subspace at all then simply give a counter example to show that it is not it is not closed with respect to addition or scalar multiplication okay now take second example now here we have considered all x1 x2 in r2 so x2 is irrational x2 is rational so again again when you take w as all x1 x2 all x1 x2 in r2 such that x1 is uh, rational okay 
x 2 is rational. Okay. Now, again if you take say 1 comma 2, it is in w because here x 2 is rational. Now, if you take alpha as under root 2, then under root 2 dot 1 comma 2 is simply under root 2 comma under root 2 under root 2, which is not in w because now x 2 is not rational. So, it is not closed with respect to vector multi I mean scalar multiplication. So, that means it is not a subspace of this vector space, not a subspace. Is it clear? Okay. Now, discuss the second problem. The second problem is um, we have taken P as V as P2, P2 are all polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2 over the real field. Then which of the following subsets of V are the subspaces of V? The first one is all P in V, v such that P dash 1 equal to 0. Okay. So, here V are all P2 over real field R and w we have taken as all p in v such that p dash 1 is equal to 0. Okay. Now, you take two polynomials p 1 and p 2 in w okay. that means uh, p 1 dash 1 equal to 0 and p 2 dash 1 is also 0 and if it is a subspace then it must be closed with respect to vector addition and scalar multiplication. So, that means you take an arbitrary uh, you, you take uh, this uh, this uh, p and we have if it is a subspace then we have to show that it is in then then we have to show that uh, p dash of this uh, p p dash p dash of this p at 1 must be 0. So, what is what is p dash of this this is alpha dot p dash p dash at 1 suppose. Uh, because because this implies that p dash is simply alpha dot p 1 plus p 2 dash dash means derivative which is alpha dot p 1 dash plus p 2 dash. Now, p 1 dash at 1 is nothing but alpha dot p 1 dash plus p 2 dash at 1 and which is alpha dot p 1 dash at 1 plus p 2 dash at 1 which is which is this statement. Okay. And this is alpha dot 0 plus 0 which is 0. So, that means this p also in w and that means w is a that, that means this w is a subspace of the vector space v. Okay. Now, if you take the second example second problem here we have taken p in v v such that p minus 1 equal to 1. Okay. Now, one, one important thing is that the additive identity of uh, vector space and all subspaces of that vector space are same. You take you take a vector space V, suppose suppose 0, suppose 0 is the you take a vector space V over the real, over the field F. Suppose this 0 denotes the additive identity of this vector space, and you take any subspace of this vector space V over the field F, it will also have the same additive identity 0. Okay. Now, here here you can easily see that uh, if you take collection of all those polynomials where p at minus 1 is 1, then then that that polynomial then uh, 0 polynomial is I mean what I want to say basically that uh, here here we are taken all p in v such that uh, p at minus 1 is 1. Okay. Now, now, what is the what is the identity of uh, this P2 is 0, this P2 has an identity 0 okay. and that is that that polynomial is not there in this S, S2 because it contains all those polynomials which uh, which are at minus 1 is 1. So, the 0 polynomial is not there because 0 polynomial at minus 1 will will attain will equal to 0 only will not be equal to 1. So, that means 0 polynomial is not there that means additive identity is not in S 2 and hence we can say that this is not a subspace of this vector space V or the other way out is 
or the other way out is you take a two polynomial say say you take uh, one say you take 1 plus x square 1 plus x square is 2. So, you take uh, you, you take any two polynomials which are at minus 1 is 1. Okay. So, at minus 1 is 1 means uh, you take 1 plus 1 is uh, it is 2 minus 1. If you take okay, if you take this polynomial it is in the blue because uh, because at minus 1 this gives 1. Okay. Now, you take another polynomial say 3 minus 2 x square again it gives at minus 1 it gives 1. Now, this is u and this is v if you add them u plus v this is 5 minus 3 x square and this polynomial this polynomial at minus 1 is nothing but is equal to 2 which is not 1 that means, this element does not belong to w. So, we have shown that it is not closed with respect to vector addition and hence we can say that it is not a subspace of this vector space v. Okay. Now, uh, let vector s v is a vector space of field f then the intersection of any collection of subspaces of uh, v is a subspace of v. If you take uh, if you say if you take uh, w suppose w 1, w 2 and so on are the subspaces of v over f. Then if you take intersection of uh, all these uh, subspaces, then it will also uh, be a subspace of this vector space v. So, if things are very easy to show you take u and v in f w and alpha in field. Then, uh, since and you have to show that uh, this uh, w this z which is alpha dot u plus uh, v is also in w. Okay. So, since uh, since u and v is in uh, intersection of w i this implies u and v are belongs to w i for all i okay. and this implies alpha dot u plus v belongs to w i for all i because because all w i's are subspaces of v. So, it uh, it must be close with respect to addition and scalar multiplication. So, this implies this z we also belong to w i for all i and this implies z belongs to intersection of uh, w i also because if it is in w i for all i that means it is in intersection also and that means z belongs to w. And that means this W is a subspace of this vector space V. Okay. Now let U1, U2 up to Un be n vectors of a vector space V, and let alpha i's are scalars, n scalars. Then if you take alpha 1 U1 plus alpha 2 U2 and so on up to alpha n Un, then this is called linear combination of U1, U2 up to Un. Okay. So, this this and this is this will be a new vector, okay. This will be a vector. So, this and it is definitely belongs to V because V is a sub V is a vector space. So, by the closing pro closure property of a scalar multiplication vector addition, this element will be in V itself, and this element is called linear combination of U1, U2 up to U n. Now we define the we define a uh, subset of uh, uh, subset of V which we call a span of S, a span of a subset S of vector space V is simply the collection of all linear combination of vectors in S. So, suppose S is u1, u2 up to un, okay. Okay. then a span of S denoted by this bracket span of S is simply the collection of all linear combinations of u1, u2 up to un. You, you see you vary alpha, these ui's are fixed, you vary alpha, alpha 1, alpha 2 up to alpha n, you vary these scalars, you will get so many vectors and the collection of all those vectors we are called as a span of s. Okay. Now, a span of s is nothing but the smallest subspace of v containing s. Okay. So, let us try to prove this. So, so, what is S? 
as a simply u 1, u 2 up to u n, it is belongs to subset of V, all u i's are from V. What is span of S? A span is a, a, as a, all those uh, u such that uh, it is u 1 alpha, alpha 1 u 1 plus alpha 2 u 2 and so on up to alpha and u n such that alpha i belongs to field for all i. Now, in this theorem we have to show three things. First we have to show that it is a subspace of uh, V, it contains S, we have to show that it is a span of S is a subspace of V. Second S is contained in span of S and third is a span of S is a smallest subspace, a smallest subspace of V containing S. Okay. Now, the now the second property is very easy to show you see you see this span is containing all the linear combinations of u 1 u 2 up to u n. Okay. If you take alpha 1 equal to 1 because alpha is are vary alpha is varying from the field. If you take alpha 1 equal to 1 and all other alpha equal to 0 then u equal to u 1. So, u 1 is definitely in span of s. Similarly, if you take alpha 2 equal to 0 and re all remaining alpha is are equal to 0, I mean alpha 2 equal to 1 and all remaining alpha equal to 0, then u 2 will be in span of S. Okay. So, so, we can say that if uh, alpha alpha i you take as 1 for any i, for any i, i from n to 1 and alpha i is equal to 0 alpha p equal to 0 when p is not equal to i, then this implies u i belongs to a span of s for any i and this implies s is contained in a span of s. So, the first part is very easy to show, I mean this part second part is very easy to show. If it contain all the linear combinations of vectors u 1, u 2 up to u n, so it will definitely contains u 1, u 2 up to u n also. Now, we have to show that it is a subspace of V. So, again you take a two, two arbitrary elements of this set say V and W belongs to a span of S and alpha belongs to field and then we have to show that alpha dot V plus W also in span of S. So, since V belongs to a span of S and this implies V is some linear combination of uh, vectors u 1, u 2 up to u n for alpha i belongs to field for all i and similarly W will be some other linear combination of u 1, u 2 up to u n. So, scalars will be different. So, this will be some scalar uh, combinations. Okay. Now, you take alpha dot u plus w, alpha dot v plus w. So, it is alpha dot alpha 1 u 1 and so on up to alpha and u n plus w is beta 1 u 1 and so on up to beta and u n. So, when you apply the definition of standard scalar multiplication by tradition, you simply get alpha alpha 1 plus beta 1 times u 1 plus alpha alpha 2 plus beta 2 times u 2 a dot is already there. Okay. So, it is alpha alpha n plus beta n dot with u n. Now, it is it is some it is some scalar it is some scalar it is some scalar. So, we can say that it is also some linear combination of u 1 u 2 up to u n. So, we can simply say that it belongs to it belongs to a span of S. Okay. So, so we can say that it belongs to a span of S and, 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 and hence we can say that span of S is nothing but uh, subspace of V. Okay. Now, we have to show that it is the smallest subspace of V containing S. So, how we can say how we can prove it? In order to show that it is a smallest subspace containing S, 
you take an arbitrary subspace uh, say T of V containing S and try to show that a span of S is also contained in T. So, so let uh, T be any arbitrary any arbitrary subspace of V containing S. Okay. And in order to show that span is the smallest such, uh, such subspace, so we have to show that a span of S is a sub subset of T. Then we can then only this will be the smallest one containing S. Okay. So, in order to show that uh, this is a subset of this take an arbitrary element in span of S and try to show that that element is also in T. So, let uh, say W belongs to span of S. So, this implies W is some linear combination of uh, elements u1, u2 up to un. And now what to show? We have to show that this W is also in T then only we can say that this span is the smallest such subspace. Okay. Now, since, uh, since u i belongs to T for all i and T is a subspace, so we can say that uh, alpha i u i also in T for all i by the you see by the closure property of scalar multiplication because T is a subspace. Okay. And this implies summation of i from 1 to n alpha i u i also belongs to T again by the uh, closure property of vector addition because alpha 1 u 1 is in T alpha 2 u 2 is in T alpha n u n is in T. So, by the uh, closure property of vector addition this sum is also in T. Okay. So, so, that this implies w is in T. Okay. And this implies span of S is a subset of T. So, hence we have shown that this span is a smallest subspace of V containing S. Okay. So, so, in this lecture we have seen that a subset of uh, vector space V, if you want to show that it is a subspace of uh, given vector space V, we have to simply show that it is closure with respect to vector addition scalar multiplication. If it is not a subspace of that vector space simply give a counter example which contradict either closure property with respect to addition or scalar multiplication. We have also seen that span of S which is uh, the collection of all linear combination of uh, uh, vectors in S is simply a smallest subspace of uh, V containing S. Thank you.